and gentlemen, happy Sunday. It's officially Sunday, so that means it's time to dust off the old Agent Carter shoes, or in my case, the slippers. That's what we're wearing right now. But Agent Carter, episode 10, season 2. Episode 2, for those of you who want to follow that Mandarin. <laughs> nope, we see him tomorrow. Tomorrow is the Mandarin. And all hail the king. That's tomorrow. But today, Agent Carter. This, <laughs> I don't even know how this, I, I don't even know the way to go about saying how this episode started. Peggy is obviously at Howard's mansion and stuff. And she sees Jarvis working out or training lifting these weights and she's like oh my god what are you doing man and he explains that he's been doing all this different training and stuff and he starts striking these poses and he's like oh go on agent miss miss carter flip me and she's like no and he starts taunting her and it does end up flipping him but then when she goes to help him up he ends up tackling her and like he's on top of her and she's like mr jarvis and then, and then Jarvis's wife shows up and is like, okay, awkward. And, he, and she's like, did he teach you all these moves and stuff? I've been doing that for a while. <laughs> and Peggy then goes to, says to Jarvis, oh, I want to go to the office. Got, a, got some work to do. And we see Daniel uh, talking to the receptionist of the SSR. And she's like, have you told her yet? Are you going to tell her? And Daniel's like, no, not yet. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. We don't know if they're talking about Peggy or Daniel's new girlfriend, who we find out is in the office talking to Peggy. And we learn her name is Violet. And she hits it off very well with Peggy. They become good friends by the looks of it. And Violet ends up inviting Peggy out to dinner with her and Daniel. And Daniel's like, oh, the reservation was booked for two. Violet's like, we'll pull up a chair. You're coming. <laughs> and Peggy's like, I don't want to, you know, intrude or anything. Daniel's like, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Awkward. I want these two to be together so much. We then see the frozen body of this woman that was being escorted to this van. But then this guy shows up and shoots the two guys that were transporting it. And he pretty much tosses them in the back of the van. And that's the last we see of them. Then we see Chadwick. I don't know his actual name. I know his last name's Chadwick. Um, so we see Chadwick go into this meeting where these guys tell him, oh, we're shutting down this operation that you're doing. The board have already decided it. We're shutting it down. Uh, later on in the episode, his wife is working on this movie set and then she meets up with Chadwick in her dressing room and they discuss, oh, that everything's gonna, everything in the lab is going to be taken away tonight. So we need to, you know, start looking into this. Then we cut back to uh, Peggy and Daniel as they find the van that was taken and they find the two dead bodies. And then Daniel says, oh, we got, um, Thompson got us that warrant to go and search that building. So they head to the building and they're like, right, we got the warrant. Let's search this place. But then they're told that there was a chemical reaction that happened or ready to a waste or something. And they can't go in. So Peggy's like, great, what are we going to do now? And then the scientist shows up who we've discovered is called James. Again, I don't know his last name. It's weird. I know I know people's last names, but not their first names. Uh, so this guy's called James, and Peggy, of course, tries to get answers out of him, but he's like, mm, I, I, I'm needed somewhere else. And he goes into the lab while Peggy goes outside, but then it turns out he left her a note that says, go to a hotel, come alone. And Daniel, back at the office, says to her, oh, no, you, you need someone to go with you. And she's like, no, I can handle myself. And then he ends up tossing his jacket somewhere, but something falls out. And what falls out? A ring. Daniel is going to propose to Violet. 
Daniel, you deserve to be with Peggy. And Peggy's like, oh, no, yeah, no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to look. And he's like, no, no, don't be, it's fine. And you, you feel the tension between these two. And I want them to be together so badly. <laughs> so Peggy talks to Jarvis's wife and gets, um, gets a nice purple dress. And Jarvis gives her the rundown on the car, which has a champagne feature has a feature with a tracking device on it, which she uses later on in the episode. And there's also a feature where the car can go backwards and Peggy like, oh my gosh, is that a mirror? <laughs> so Peggy goes to this hotel and meets James. And they, they kind of hit it off a little bit here. I can, feel a tension between them, but I, I, I feel Peggy should be with Daniel regardless. And, you know, they talk about what what they've been working on, what was the reaction, uh, the, like the chemical reaction that they got at least, but then Dan, uh, he hears this music being played, James hears, uh, he, or is it James, Jason, I don't know. Uh, he hears this music being played and he's like, oh my God, that's my that's my song, I need to go. And they start dancing together and again. There's a good connection between them. But you need to be with Daniel, Peggy. You need to be with Daniel. <laughs> so he says he's got more information and he takes her away. But then there's some guy staring at them in the bar. And they go to this observatory where he says he's got... This is where he trained for a bit before he went to where he is now and after he left that note for Peggy he actually was seen lurking about this office and he breaks in and takes this tape thing and again he was being watched so someone knows he has this and at this laboratory place he plays this videotape that he stole and on this videotape shows this wormhole or something lifting these army guys into the air and then it leaves behind that black goo that we've seen at the end of the last episode and he just explains you know someone has been trying to look into this for a long time and Peggy's like right we're gonna go steal that thing but before they do these guys who are outside slashed the tires of her Howard's car and they obviously try to take out Peggy and uh, Jason. I think it's Jason. It's Jason, isn't it? No, it's James. Oh, I, I, I don't know. They try. I, I said at the start and now I've forgotten it. So they try to take them out and of course he says he was in the military so he tries to shoot them. Peggy then obviously sends the... It's a... Oh, I can't remember what it is, it's an SVR thing or something, and <laughs> Jarvis is back at his place trying to um, do something with Bernard, um, or Bernard, or whatever they called it, the Flamingo, and his wife's like, oh, there's a transmitter coming through. So Jarvis then ends up ringing Daniel, who was getting ready to go out on his date with Violet. And Daniel's like really pissed at this, and not that the you know date's ruined, but the fact that Peggy might be in trouble. And the receptionist tells Jarvis, "Oh no, he really cares about Peggy." And Jarvis like, "Oh, don't we all?" And she's like, "No, no, he has a very special connection to Peggy." And Peggy and um, James, I'm calling him James. <laughs> Peggy and James then end up leaving the car because they get into this whole car chase which leads into the town and they leave it in an alleyway and Peggy finds this device which she has seen before. This is the same device that um, that Dottie was going after it in the first episode. So she's now linked these, kind of linked these two together because she goes, I've seen this before. And they head out into the town and they find a phone booth and Peggy needs to get changed. So they go into this restaurant and the guy behind the till is just a complete ass. And he's like, oh, you need to buy something. And Peggy's like, if you think I'm going to buy something from you, and then they end up do buying something. 
but the phone doesn't work. And then they see this car coming and they're like, oh crap, it's a car, what do we do? So Peggy and James rush into the phone booth and they're like really close to each other and it turns out to be just some fat guy. And then they end up kissing. And I saw this, I was like, no, you're not meant to be kissing. You're not meant to be kissing. They kiss for a good portion. And then Peggy's like, I have, a, I have an idea. And he's like, oh yeah, so do I. And she's like, we're going to go steal that car. Denied. <laughs> Denied any further shot there. <laughs> so they head to the office that they went to, uh, Peggy went to earlier. Because they were going to break in and steal this device, which James does do. He breaks in and sucks it into this little cap, like this little uh, device. While outside, Peggy deals with a few guys who were obviously trying to break in, so she takes care of them. But then Chadwick's wife shows up and she says to James, I want that device, give it to me. And he's like, you have no idea what this is going to do. And of course, they fight over it and they end up dropping it and it smashes on the ground and the liquid starts oozing up. And then there's this big gust of wind which hits Peggy outside, she rushes inside, and he's gone, Chadwick's wife's gone, and there's just this giant hole in the wall. Bring on the wall! I know you won't get that reference, but if you do, you're a genius. <laughs> so, the closing moments of this episode is Daniel and Jarvis showing up to the building. They find Peggy. And Peggy just says everything that happened. But Daniel's like, no, no, Peggy, you, you see, you've done too much, you know. You're talking too fast, you're going all off. You need to go home. And Peggy's like, no, 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 he didn't make it. James didn't make it. And Daniel's like, Peggy, please, just, just head home. So Jarvis takes her home. And she has a nice closing moment with Jarvis's wife. I need to get her name. Uh, Jarvis's wife's name, I need to get her name, and Daniel is seen with Violet because obviously <clears throat> he had to abandon the dinner to obviously go and take care of what Peggy did, and he just says to her, right, we'll, we'll make up, you know, for lost time, and she's like, I love you, I love you too, yeah, no, you don't, you deserve to be with Peggy, but the closing moments of this is we're in this room, and we hear someone calling for Chadwick, I think it's Chadwick calling his wife's name, I need to get her name too, and she's kind of just seen, so she, she survived somehow, James didn't, but she did, and she's just sitting there, again, like looking into a, like a mirror or something, and then she lifts some of her head, and you can see a cut in her head, and I think the liquid, or whatever this thing is, is inside her head, and that ends our episode. So there was a lot to follow in this episode. I, I think with these episodes, I need to really be focused. Remembering names is a crucial point. I know I've said I'm not good with names. So if I ever butcher a name, whether it's James, Jason, or whoever he is, he's dead now, unfortunately. But look at season one. I didn't get Chief Dooley until, like, what, episode 6 or 7. Same with Agent Thompson and Daniel. So, you know, it's... These names just come to me, second nature. Um, but, ladies and gentlemen, that is episode 10 of Agent Carter. Episode 11 will be on Wednesday. And tomorrow, we have the Marvel one-shot, All Hail the King! which is going to focus on the fake Mandarin from Iron Man 3. That's all I know about it, is that it's based on him, obviously, because he's in the thumbnail, for God's sake. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it. I'm tired. I might just go to sleep here. Good night, everybody.